Masters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and I'm very excited to have with me Mr. Prabhjot Singh, who is the founder and CEO at Fi. So, how are you doing, Prabhjot? I'm I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on today, Chris. Oh, I'm excited to have you here, sir. Very excited to have you. I'm so glad we were able to connect and and learning a lot about Fi's and what you guys are doing over there. So, just tell me a little bit about your about your story. Ah, uh, my story. All right. Well, so I. Yeah, yeah, I did computer systems engineering in in college. I went to BU. Uh, after BU, I joined Citigroup. Uh, right, Citigroup was uh, had just merged with Travelers. It was this bigger behemoth than it was before uh, when it was just Citibank. And I had the fortune of getting into this uh, management associate training program. Right, that. John Reed, who used to be the CEO of Citigroup at that time, kind of uh, uh, came out of. So that was th- that was a ton of fun. I learned a lot about banking and management. And maybe a year into it, uh, I got a call from uh, this tiny company in Silicon Valley called Wiley Technology. Right? They had invented uh, application performance management for uh, websites. Right. So if you remember in the early days of the Internet and you know, going back 20 odd years, I'm kind of dating myself, but uh, you'd uh, you'd go and try to you know fill out uh, a credit card application or rent a car on Hertz or Avis and the, the site would go kaput. Right. And no one understood why. Right. Because you had these big monolithic applications that are running the back end. So Wiley figured out how to X-ray those applications to identify the bits and bytes that were breaking down, right? And uh, so I I joined them. I was like employee number 12. Uh, You you know, it was a phenomenal ride. We we grew that business to about uh, 60 million in revenue. It got, uh, you know, got acquired by Computer Associates where, you know, I had the good fortune to take over as kind of uh, VP of marketing and, and, you know, I, I grew that business uh, several times over, right, in the next three or four years while I was there, along with, you know, an amazing team. So that that was, you know, for me, like just a phenomenal exercise of, you know, seeing a company scale, right? We, we, we did a bunch of things right, obviously, but a bunch of things that we probably could have done better along the way. Right, right. And, uh, and I just caught that startup bug. Uh, you know, which has stayed with me ever since. Um, and, you know, if we think about Pies, Pies kind of does what Wiley did, but we do it for the business process, right? So yeah. uh, we don't just take an X-ray of the application, we do an MRI, <laughs> right, of the end-to-end business process and identify, you know, where there's issues, where there's bottlenecks, where there's hotspots, so we can improve that, improve that process. So, oh. uh, you know, for, for me, uh, the journey continues. I, you know, I, I, I uh, absolutely love sort of, you know, tackling new things. Uh, and, you know, so uh, startups are a great way to do that because every day is a new day, right? Sure. You're dealing with a, with a different problem. So when, when did it start? So we've been, uh, we, we started Pies about, uh, gosh, it's been almost eight years now, right? So okay. it's been an um, amazing, amazing journey. Uh, you know, we, we actually uh, started with looking at business to consumer applications. And then we've started, uh, you know, over the last few years to focus a lot more on enterprise processes, manufacturing processes, supply chain, logistics. Um, you know, and just helping enterprises improve their business operations, right? Our our mission really is to help each company achieve operational excellence for their key business processes. Okay. Now, how about the name? I'm curious. Where where did that come from? <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's a uh, great story, right? So we're surprised, so right? Started by a uh, bunch of engineers, uh, right? And I think we were geeking out on you know, what we wanted to achieve and what we were hoping to do was help people take complexity 
and turn it into simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, take these complex problems that people have and then help them solve those, those, uh, those complex issues. So we, you know, we were thinking about, okay, well, the number pi represents complexity, right? And, and pi charts represent simplicity, so to speak, right? So, it, it, you know, uh, and, and we came across, right, this four-letter domain name, Pies, uh, which was available, and we're like, oh, wow, that's it. That's money right there. So that's, that, that's kind of, you know, the story behind the name. Okay. Very cool. Love, I love that story. That's awesome. So you guys are working a lot of times with manufacturers in the trenches. What are you hearing of some of the challenges that, that are out there right now? Because I'm trying to figure out where you inflect your solutions to help people. The biggest challenge manufacturers have is uh, end-to-end process visibility. That's one of the the biggest challenges that we see today because you know there's there's pressure on all manufacturers to just be more efficient, right? It, it's there's and there's lots of reasons why that's the case, um, and you know there's a lot of external factors in play, right? Like we. We've got this, you know, broken global supply chain right now. You know, part of that has to do with the pandemic and it's no one's fault. But, you know, at the end of the day, when someone orders a couch or uh, a bed, uh, you know, or, or a car and, hey, it's going to take six months to get it, you know, the customer is not happy, right? Like, uh, right. like it's like the, they don't have that understanding of the nuance of, you know, we got all these ships off the uh uh, you know, off the uh, uh, bay in Oakland, <laughs> you know, or down in LA or on the West Coast, uh, that are just trying to get in, and you know, there's there, there's all these problems. But so, I, I I think the focus on how do we improve the cycle times of production of these goods that we need to deliver is is probably the biggest issue facing all manufacturers today, right? right? And people will talk about oh, you know, look. China and automation and all these things, but yeah, you know those are th- those are certainly issues that uh, you know that exist. But uh, I, I, I think where I see people asking for the most help is, you know, how can we make our existing process, our existing production process, uh, better, faster, cheaper? Uh, you, you know, reduce sort of some of the manual work uh, to that people are doing. You know, maybe even using Excel files, right, and orchestrate that better, so that you know the turnaround time can be faster, right? The master data setup can be accelerated, right? Because there's all these pieces that go into a, a production manufacturing process, yeah. and people, you know, are looking for visibility in that end-to-end process, and then ways of optimizing each piece of that, so to speak. Right. Because I mean, I guess the competitive nature of business has never been higher, and it's and it's not it's not going in reverse. That's right. That's right. Right. Okay. Well, that's great. So I mean, when you, when you say you know you're doing that end to end process visibility, when you identify those pieces of the process, you know, the, I guess that's the area that you're trying to you're not necessarily trying to call it out, and you know, to so far as to get certain departments or things like that in trouble. I'm trying to clear this up for, for some listeners out there, but you're trying to, to zone in on, on where to focus. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, look, like everyone's working hard. I think we're all working harder than we used to work. Right. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, there's just given the, the nature of the world, right. There's this demand to do uh, more with less, right. Like that's just the, the world we live in. So how do you identify ways of making your people more effective, right? Making them more productive yeah. and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example of a, a company we're just working with right now that, you know, they, they, they've got to do this master data setup uh, piece of the process to execute order delivery. And, and that process itself was taking them, uh, you know, close to 30, 35 days. And, and the reason for that was, you know, they're, they're shooting around Excel sheets, right, between departments that different people had to kind of fill out every single field. Uh, and unless you have all those fields, you can't even enter that, that order for, for fulfillment, right? So 
by introducing a, um, a you know a, a, a platform a collaboration platform where people could collaborate on entering that data in without having to do this manual work just a it gave people a lot more sanity and yeah. b it sped up their process by over 50% right in terms of get, getting that job done wow that's impressive results there Outstanding. Yep. Outstanding. So one thing, Project, we'd like to get your input on, you, you know, we, we're trying to, to encourage that next generation to consider manufacturing and you're, you're out there, you, you work a lot of these with, with a lot of the manufacturers directly. So the perception can be, you know, dark, dirty, dangerous, those, those typical things you hear about when you hear about manufacturing. So anything that you'd like to, to debunk from a myth or just your perception of what, a lot of these manufacturing environments truly are. Yeah. Oh man, there's so many myths uh, about manufacturing out there that like are so I, I think unfounded, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, who was I was talking to someone recently that was that, that was telling me, you know, like, look, manufacturing is going to go away and everything's going to be done by 3D printing, <laughs> right? So. Uh, right, like, look, ma manufacturing is is critical. Um, uh, is a critical critical industry that is not going away anytime soon. And you know, like this this whole myth of you know most factories are going to be automated and everything's going to be three D printed is is just plain wrong. Right? right, like, yeah, you know, we're seeing people using three D printing today for prototypes or you know, spare parts, just as kind of, you know, limited qualities for, for some very specific products, right? I, I mean, most products you actually can't um, utilize for 3D printing today, but the rules are not changing for manufacturing anytime soon, right? It's, it's, it's critical. And, and I think it's a, it's a great career for people to, to, to get into today, because there's such an amazing opportunity to innovate and, you know, continue to disrupt and, you know, deliver greater value to customers. Right. Now you, so you got, you got some people interested now. Now you, so you, let's say you have that young man or that young lady and they're considering manufacturing and you get a chance to sit down with coffee for them and, ha and, and, and break some bread in the morning and give them some, some really pointers and things to think about uh, as they, as they enter the industry. What are you telling them? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, look, the first thing is you should, you should get into manufacturing if you're passionate about building, right? Okay. Like, that, like, that's a great point. Yeah. Right. If you, if you're passionate about building and you know delivering products uh, to people and, and it doesn't, I mean, and, and look, there's lots of aspects to that, right? There's, there's the aspect of what we do, for instance, right? Like process improvement, uh, with, which is critical to any any manufacturing process, right? Because you, as you, uh, you know, execute a, a production process, you have the opportunity to improve, right? Mm -hmm. You have the ability to improve the cycle time. You have the ability to improve uh, the quality. You have the ability to improve the, uh, you know, the margins, right? Related to delivering that product. So I, I, I think Lean and Six Sigma are like two areas that I would point people to, to kind of you know, learn more about, to understand, because those are certainly critical to you know, any, any production process, but those skills are really, really transferable to a myriad of different aspects of, of manufacturing that can allow you to be very successful and it's a really, really good career path in general. Yes, absolutely. Great point. I mean, we, we talked about lean manufacturing five, five S before and six Sigma. I mean, all those really areas of, to, that you can lean into and, and, and grow your career and have a lot of fulfillment, you know, and, and really make a big impact out there. Great advice. Yep, for sure. So speaking of fulfillment, when are you the happiest? What, what what brings you? You know, when you when you have a good day, you're not coming home and kicking the dog. You may actually come home and pet the dog. What what happened that day <laughs> that made it so good for you? 
uh, uh, don't want to kick my dog. That will not, that, that will not end well. Uh, all right. Look, so like for me, like the, the, the reason I, I, I do this work is, is all about helping, helping customers achieve better results. Right. Like I, like, you know, I mean, I, like I, I've worked in big companies and had sort of, you know, cushy jobs. Um, I, what I love about sort of our work and, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a company that is enabling people to improve their operations, right, is really helping them achieve their best self. Right, like how do you achieve operational excellence in the work that you do, or and and whether that's uh, fulfillment, delivery, procurement, right, core production, uh, it's really helping customers understand uh, what their what their world is today. Because like like most people have a sense of their process. Uh, right, they've got kind of a gut sense of kind of where where things are slow, where things might be broken, uh, but typically it's anecdotal, and 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 people have a understanding of their part of the world, right? Like, uh, right. And, and they usually know their part of the world really well, but as you start to zoom out, uh, that understanding gets more and more fuzzy, right? It gets fuzzier, and and from the management level. It's typically not what they think it is, right? Like there's there's the ping pong effect. There's uh, you know there's reliance on upstream suppliers, right? There's uh, there's reliance on downstream uh, you know vendors for for delivery or or shipping or whatever. Um, so like what gives me the most fulfilling um, sense is you, you know that aha moment that customers have when they're like, yeah. Oh, I, you know, I get it. I understand that this part of my process is slow and, and why it's slow. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. because once you know, now you can do something about it. That's right. right. That's right. Very good. Well, all right. Well, look, let's, let's take a turn and let's talk about you outside of work. Cause we love to on our hero episodes. We like to, to get to know our, our heroes are on a more personal level. So you, you good with that prep joke? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I, I, okay. What do you enjoy doing for fun? <laughs> well, so, you, you know, during the pandemic, uh, and, the, and look, the silver lining of the pandemic for me was getting to work from home. Right. Okay. Like it, it, it's cause, uh, cause you know, I, I, I had a two year old, uh, daughter when the pandemic started and, you know, I've got a pretty demanding job where, you know, like I usually, I'm, I, I, my first call is at 6am and, you know, I'm, I'm going kind of, you know, all day, uh, really, really hard, you know, so I made a rule that, look, I was going to come home and give her a bath, right? Like, so, so I'd be running home, right? At like seven, seven thirty in the evening Given given her a bath, putting her to bed, right? So that was like my quality time with her. Yeah. Because uh, you know, and I did that for the first two years of her life, right? Now the pandemic starts, and you know, we we first sort of said, okay, well, you know, we'll we'll, we'll shut down the office for a bit, like we all did, um, and and then we we decided, look, it, we were actually being more productive as a as a team working remotely. We optimized for. For remote work, and you know, I started working out of out of my home. I'm, you know, I've got this set up in my garage uh, right now. Uh, we're very quiet. Uh, I can be very focused. I can get a lot of work done. But I'm home, and you know, so I, I got to spend so much more time with my daughter, right, over the yeah. last couple of years than I possibly would have been. You know, that's uh, that, so that to me, that's been a kind of a big silver lining. In, yeah. uh, 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 of the pandemic that we got to do that. You know, I got to, I start. I, I took up cooking a lot more, right? I, 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 I find cooking to be very therapeutic. Uh, you know, I start. I started making pizza. I think we, we, we talked about that before uh, and, and really perfecting the, the production process of making pizza. <laughs> uh, 
So, uh, you know, and, and a bunch of other other things. I enjoy cooking in general. Uh, you know, all different types of types of cuisine and stuff. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the other thing that we've been doing as a family is just because, like, it's been like you know things things have been shut down. You really can't, you know, go out to the mall and hang out. You know, like like maybe we used yeah. to before the pandemic. Though those things are starting to pick up again, which is good. Like we made it a point, you know, my uh, my wife, uh, my my daughter, and I, to just get out every weekend and go hiking. Right. We oh, we live nice. we, we live in the Bay Area. Yeah, there's like, so much beauty around us. Right. So every weekend we'll just pick a new place and we'll say, okay, let's go let's go hiking. Um, and it's it's a great way to just sort of connect with get a nature and kind of de-stress a little bit right so we've 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 been enjoying doing that uh you you know whether we do it by ourselves or with family or you know friends it's just just make it a point to just get out uh, and do something outside the house right yeah uh, on the weekends man that sounds great so yeah some 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 wonderful ways that you spend your time with the ones that mean the most to you and and speaking of family we love hearing about family so you sounds like you got a four-year-old girl is that is that correct that that's right i got a four-year-old girl going on 14. <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm a three-time girl dad so i feel your pain brother i, I i'm with you <laughs> <laughs> right on I can't, I can't imagine three. <laughs> One's a handful. <laughs> yeah. 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 It just multiplies. You know, don't let anybody, you know, try to tell you, Oh, it gets easier. No, it doesn't get easier. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. But see, how about any other family, any other family in the Bay area? Yeah. My, uh, you know, my, my sister uh, is in the Bay area. So she, um, uh, just, just had a daughter, uh, just as the pandemic hit, right? So the, oh, okay. it's it's uh, so she's you know she's a little over two now, so that's cool because you know uh, my niece and my daughter are kind of now they're at the age where they can actually start playing with each other, play together. Right? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, you know my mom is here with us as well. So uh, yeah, that's kind of you know, and I've got a brother in, who's on the east coast, so we haven't seen his him and his kids and. Uh, you know, my sister-in-law in, in almost a couple of years. In fact, wow. my last trip before the pandemic was to Boston. So I got to see them right before, you know, stuff right. shut down. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out and about now. So I, I was just out in uh, Austin and San Antonio, meeting with the Air Force uh, for some work we're doing with them just uh, a few weeks ago. So, you, you know, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll make it out to Boston in the next month or so. There you go. Well, it sounds like you got a great family. Thank you for sharing with us about them. So, how about things that you enjoy consuming for fun? You know, it could be professional, it could be personal, just podcasts, YouTube, books, anything like that. Anything jump out that you would recommend listeners to check out? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I I, I certainly enjoy uh, listening to your podcast. Uh, well, Chris. thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, but in terms of things that, you know, I, I, I really like to consume outside of work, right? Like, so for me, I, you know, I, I mean, I usually have a lot of go- lot going on, right? A lot of balls up in the air, whether it's customers or, you know, with product teams or development teams, right? There, there's stuff that keeps me, keeps me busy all day. And, you know, what I really like to do is sort of defrag a little bit at the, okay. at, you know, on the weekends, right? So, yep. uh, and and part of that is, you know, maybe binging on Netflix or. Uh, you know, just just picking up a fiction book, right? That uh, takes me to a different world. Uh, yeah. You know, like I, I just reread the uh, Asimov Foundation series, uh, which you know he kind of envisioned uh, or created science fiction in many ways, right? Uh, before Star Wars and everything, and um, uh, Apple just remade that uh, uh, the the Foundation as a show. And before you know that came out, I. I had the opportunity to just re- reread the uh, the actual books. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm into science fiction um, uh, in, in general. Or, you know, I'll, I'll look at uh, when I have the time, just sort of you know crack out uh, you know a few episodes of kind of you know my favorite uh, uh, show on Netflix or or Amazon or something. Sure, sure, okay. 
Well, thank you for sharing there. And uh, so, uh, Prop Joe, what we do on Eco Ask Why, we have the lightning round. I fire uh -huh. a bunch of random stuff at you. You just fire back with with first thing that comes to mind, okay? Right on. All right. I, I, I think I probably know this cause I, because <laughs> you, you mentioned it a few times. What is your favorite food? Uh, oh, so, yeah, look, obviously, I, I, I love pizza. I've, yep. uh, you know, all different kinds, uh, Chicago style, thin crust, right? Neapolitan, you, you name it, I'm, I'm into it. Um, and I think Chinese would probably be a close second for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What now? What, what's your best topping? Do you have a favorite topping for that pizza? Oh yeah. Uh, look, I, I I will do just a good pepperoni pizza any day. Any day. Uh, okay. Any day. Very my, good. My my. I, I got to make sure my wife doesn't hear this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, she'd want me to eat a uh, you know good good salad with that. Pizza. That's right, that's right. You know, well, you know, it's got tomatoes on it, so you know, you're, you're you're close enough, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> How about uh, adult beverage? Uh, so I, um, you know, so I, I I don't I don't drink alcohol, but my favorite uh, kind of you know guilty drink would be like a ginger beer or a curiosity cola or one of those that okay uh, okay yeah what yeah. what's uh what's your favorite app on your phone oh man uh, i you know i think the app i probably used to use the most was like uber or something before the pandemic right right but, uh, <laughs> but my favorite app you know i'm addicted to this game called candy crush saga Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I'm on some crazy level, right? I've been playing it for 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 years, uh, like level six, seven, eight thousand, something like that. Um, I, you know, and and for me, it's just a way again of just kind of you know when out. I've got some close time, uh, you know, some time to just sort of check out and not yep. think about anything. I'll I'll crush those candies like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I hear you. Tomb, tomb blast for me, but I'm yeah. the same way. My my level is is ridiculous, but it it says something about me. That I'm not sure it's good, but anyway. Uh, no uh, judgment. No judgment. That's right. This is a judgment free zone for between me, you and I here today, so it's it's great. That's right. Now, what I'm curious, what's your favorite movie? So you said you're a sci-fi guy. So is it a sci-fi movie? Yeah, uh, I. You know, I think uh, Space Odyssey is probably one of my favorite movies. Two thousand one okay. Space Odyssey is probably one of my uh, my favorite movies. But you know, I, like I I I, uh, I I I look at a kind of broad genre uh, of 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 you know everything from action to sort of sci fi, you know, fantasy, right? Like all, th those types of things are typically what I'm into. You know, like Inception, I thought was a great movie. Um, you, you know, uh, in terms of just kind of, it messed with your head a little bit, right? In terms of what's right. actually going on. So, okay. uh, you know, those are the types of movies I'm, I'm into. Okay. How about sports teams? Uh, I'm a, I'm a Niners fan, uh, 49ers, you know, going, dating back to the Joe Montana glory days. Right? Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So we, we, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what next year brings. <laughs> There's always next year. That's right. That's right. That's How right. about uh, any guilty pleasures? Uh, I, as I said, binging is, uh, you know, okay. uh, on, on Netflix probably is my guiltiest pleasure. I, I got say. you. I got you. Yeah. Now, the how about uh, the best place you've ever been? Best place I've ever been. So that would be, you know, for a honeymoon, uh, we got a chance to go to Australia Ooh, and nice. that was really fun. Like we did, we did like a week in Sydney to kind of, you know, which, which, and, and I've been to Sydney, you know, plenty of times before for work, but you know, I, I like, I, I, I joke, like I've seen the best conference rooms in like, you know, all the greatest cities in the world. Right. Typically <laughs> like, like I, I think I did a trip to Sydney once for, for 24 hours, right? Like it took me longer wow. to from from New York to LA to Sydney and then back where you know it was some customer issue when I was at computer associates that they they, they needed me to go out and talk to the customer about. So uh 
so for my for the honeymoon, you know, we like we actually got a chance to go and see museums and you know the beaches, the opera house, and that that was just fantastic. And then we got to spend a week on the northeastern tip of Australia, a town called Port Douglas, mm -hmm. uh, which is right off the the Great Barrier Reef, right? So we got to go snorkeling on the reef, uh, you know, and, and kind of you know, see like this pristine nature like you wouldn't believe. So I, I, I would really, really recommend that to everyone. It's not a very touristy town. Like Cairns is, is like Miami beach uh, right. in the U S right. but if you go North of that, you know, it's sort of like you hit the keys, right. Okay. Just like you would, if you go went South in Florida and it's kind of like less travel, less touristy, uh, but like just amazing, amazing food amazing people and just laid back you know people walking around with flip-flops uh yeah so it was cool very cool very cool all right last question there prob joke so what about dogs or cats uh so um dogs for sure all uh, right <laughs> There is only one right answer. So I'm glad you got that. Now you mentioned earlier that you wouldn't kick your dog because it wouldn't end up good. So what kind of dog you got? Um, so I, I, I've got a shepherd. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's been, it's been great. Um, uh, it, so we've, we've had him for a while. He's, he's actually in uh, with my in-laws in, in India right now, but uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to get him over here shortly very cool very cool well this has been phenomenal just getting to know you i thank you so much for everything that you've shared so we call it eco s why we always wrap up with the why so prop joe if somebody wants to know what your personal why is what are you going to tell them i mean for me it's pretty pretty simple like show up and make a difference right like i i think i'm a, I'm a big believer in kind of being present in what you're doing otherwise don't do it right so uh no, no matter, uh, you know, what activity I engage in, I, you know, I try to kind of make a difference and it, it, it's very, very fulfilling for me to be able to have that impact. Right. And, and I, and I think that's, you know, that's the mentality with which, uh, you know, I approach our customers or, you know, our employees, right. We're, we're like a, uh, fast growing company, right. At pause, we're probably going to double in size this year right so i think as you you know as we sort of engage with uh with people who put their trust in us right who put their trust in me i want to honor that trust right and and make sure that uh i i help them and i deliver on what i say i'm gonna to to deliver on right right well i love it i mean thank you so much for everything that you're doing is there anything else that you like to share no, uh, Chris, I really, really appreciate the opportunity, uh, you know, to chat with you, uh, you know, and uh, thank you for your time today. Absolutely. The pleasure has been all mine. And for the listeners out there, check out the show notes. There'll be all sorts of ways to connect directly with Fize and Prob Joe, all the wonderful things that they're, that they're building and, and the way that they're serving industry. So thank you again for your time, sir. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Chris. What a fun conversation with Prob Joe. Say what he's done some phenomenal things in his career and just the, the way that he supports and serves industry, that, that end to end process visibility that he talks about, you can just feel it in his voice. I mean, this is what he loves. This is what he loves to do. And I love how he said, it, show up and make a difference. I think if we all just took that approach, you look wherever we're at, whatever position you're in, if you're hearing this, this message right now, just show up because you can make a difference. Now guys, we need the war stories. We want them coming in, the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny. Uh, maybe they're not so funny. That's okay, too. Send them to us because we're going to take those. We're collecting them. We're putting them together. We want to share those with people because we know you need to have uh, some encouragement out there because industry, it's a fun place to work, and we're trying to highlight that. So give us those stories, those things that you tell at the water cooler, the things that you tell at the family vacations where everybody's around at the table and you, and you, and you want to get – to, to get a get a rise out of people that's what we want to share with with others so just go to the show notes you have ways right there that you can connect with us directly now if you're liking eco ask why we would ask that you share it with someone send a text message send an email just let them know hey this is a pretty cool episode check this person out 
You never know. These types of stories, they're, they're meant to, to uplift, to inspire. We're trying to build that next generation that, that wants to come in and lean into manufacturing and make industry great. Give us a five-star rating. Write a review. That makes all the difference in the world. Hope you have a great day. And remember, keep asking why.